This kind of feels like a special edition of Driving Cleveland today. I'm just going to call it Driving Cleveland 007 because we are driving the Aston Martin DB11, which is luxury in every way. Um, the price tag is high, but once you sit in this car and you look at this car, you can see why. Um, I feel like it's Christmas and New Year's and my birthday and every holiday all in one today, so I'm pretty pumped to drive this. And if it's good enough for Tom Brady, I think it's gonna be good enough for this Cleveland Indian starting pitcher who we're going to pick up right now. I know you're used to driving a big truck around, but welcome to the Aston Martin DB11. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty different. <laughs> that was I like pretty it, sweet, right? Yeah. Um, I think even though normally I'm driving them, I got to drive it here. Why don't we switch seats and you see what this thing can do? Okay. All right. All right. Let's switch. All right. <laughs> Take it out. So I've got a, is this parking brake on or something? Um, it shouldn't be. Did you put, give it some gas? I have no idea. Give it up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's so sweet. And I get, I was told that there will never be like sunroofs or moonroofs on these cars because the British said, if you want to see the moon, get the convertible. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That makes right? sense. Yeah. <laughs> How many years have you been in Cleveland now? In actual Cleveland or with the Cleveland Indians? Actually I, in Cleveland. Uh, this would be my seventh year. I was got called up to the big leagues in 2010. Um, so you're originally from Tyler, Texas. Yes. Right, Tyler, Texas, which is um, the capital of the world for roses. Correct, correct, yeah. Um, lots Rose. of magnolia trees. Right. And um, you've had some big football players there too. Johnny Manziel, uh -huh. right? Home of Johnny right. Manziel. Do you know Johnny? I, I don't know him very well, but I mean, I've, I've had interactions with him, yes, but not like didn't know him like on a close friend basis or anything like that no he was quite a bit younger than me so when you moved from texas and you now are in cleveland for seven years did you find yourself some good barbecue here because i know that can be a sticking point in texas right it can, it can be <laughs> yeah um we usually just go i usually just eat when i'm at home or in cleveland um at the field and our chef um mark and miguel they usually cook pretty good barbecue so i'm not sure if i've ever had a barbecue place around here actually to be honest with you do you have a chance to like get out and go into the city much because your schedule it's really grueling um and major league baseball you're from traveling from city to city your hours are long so i'm sure at the end of the day do you just kind of want to go home it is and it's different whenever you're single then you have a wife and two kids it's it's there's a little bit of difference to to what you're able to do and 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 what you want to do because you're usually tired by the time the game's over with now and um, only thing you really want to do is go home and see them because you've been away from them so long. Of so, um, or for the whole day. But um, no, there's really you don't really get a chance to go and really tour or explore Cleveland how you how you want to. But um, that's mainly just because you're you're at the ballpark at noon. Like we're headed to the ballpark right now. It's 12:30, and the game's not till seven o'clock today. Yeah, it's a long day. So then we're not gonna get home till you know 10 o'clock tonight, 11 o'clock tonight, depending on how long the game goes so um you're you're in cleveland quite a bit but you don't actually get to experience cleveland how you'd want to speaking of the game oh my gosh it's so exciting right <laughs> now do you guys do you feel pressure with this whole streak thing going on or not there's zero there's absolutely zero pressure on us right now it's we understand our main goal is to win the world series and that's been our main goal since spring training so this is really cool what's going on, don't get me wrong, we, we enjoy it, but no one talks about it, thinks about it, or or plays any differently because of it. And I think that's the reason why you go on streaks like this, is um, we've got a pretty mature and pretty, I guess, charismatic team to where yeah. it's not, we, we enjoy playing with each other. It's not about like individual goals or individual stats, it's about what can we do today to be one run better than the other team. And, um, you have that mentality with a talented group of guys like we have, it's it's going to bode well for you for a long period of time, I feel like. Do you have a sense of how special that is? Because, look, that's a formula that not every team can have. And oh, so yeah. to experience that in your career, can you do you sense how special that is 
and how rare it is. Yeah, you can you can definitely sense it. I mean, um, you can see that you know we're getting ESPN games, we're getting all this media coverage and national coverage on on TV that the Cleveland Indians usually don't get. And, and, and even even last year when we were doing well, you weren't getting the kind of top of coverage that we're getting right now. And I think they understand how how special this group is, and I think we've known that for quite some time now. It's just it takes a little bit to kind of build that chemistry. I mean, last year we had a, we had a great run, but you lose some key guys, then you get some key guys back in return, and it takes a little bit to, to build that chemistry, to build that 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 uh, camaraderie that you that you have in a clubhouse. And, and once that started happening, that's whenever you started seeing us win a lot more games, had a lot more streaks, um, winning more games in a row, and then now we're on a 19 game winning streak. So it's like, you know, that's pretty rare in its own. Uh, self, but you know that's what we're capable of doing with a team like we have. I think what's cool though is that you said like when you're not paying attention to any of it, and you're just, I mean, yes, you're focused because you want to perform well, but you're having fun doing it. It takes out that mental aspect that can trip people oh, yeah. up, just in life in general. Right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's it's you when you get to come to the ballpark and. And you don't have the pressure of, I've got to win today. Uh, we've got to win today. It's just that pressure of, and it helps that we're in first place and we're probably going to go to the playoffs. We have that mindset we're going to the playoffs. Yeah. So, so the streak is like, it's just like an added bonus to, to what we're doing right now. So it's not right. nothing like you're going, well, damn, if I, if I, don't, or dang, if I don't win today, then, then we're not going to be in first place or anything like that. So all that added pressure from the streak is, is gone because – our main goal is to win the World Series, but you have all this other stress going on away from field. If you if you do, if you don't, you get to come to the field and get to be a part of that. What, what basically, it's your second home, and there's a lot of positive energy and positive things that are going on there. That just kind of makes you get away from everything on the outside world. You just get focused on playing baseball, and that's the fun part about it. You know, speaking of the World Series, and I know, you know, as I'm sure as a professional athlete, and certainly a team's perspective is you're looking forward and not necessarily looking backward. But you can't have this ride and not talk about how amazing that moment was for you in the World Series, especially. You know, a lot of people talk about when your dad got to come and see you. Like, was that really a life moment for you to not only be pitching in a World Series, but obviously to have your family there and um, given all that your dad was battling, that he was there for you. Is that oh, still yeah, one of the best moments of your life? Of my life, my entire life, absolutely. And that includes marrying my wife and my two kids. It's, it's right there with those. It's it's something that um, he wasn't supposed to be able to do, and doctors told him not to, but it, how many chances are you going to get to see your son pitch in World Series? That's kind of what he was thinking. So he's like, right. you know what, I'm going to break every rule in the book, but if I have to get there, somehow, some way, I'm going to get there. So, and it was... That was a pretty special moment for me, um, a really special moment for me when I actually got this. I, I laid, I visually laid eyes on him um, uh, before the game, so I knew exactly where he was. So when things started getting a little bit, I wouldn't say speeding up on me, but they were, you know, pressure situations. The crowd would get loud. The anxiety started kind of creeping in and butterflies, you know. Um, that nervous feeling, I could just look at him. and I could just see when he's up there, he's clapping, having a good time. Um, drinking a Bud Light. So I was like, there's my dad. Being my dad in front of all these people, in front of all this on a national stage, it was it was just something so surreal for me to watch. Like, I'm getting nervous about a guy on second base with nobody out or one out in the World Series. Well, he's trying to he's trying to walk again. Yeah. What am I nervous about? What am I scared of? What, wow. what, what do I have to worry about? So it puts everything in a little bit of perspective of, of I, I'm getting nervous playing a kid's game. It's supposed to be fun. This isn't supposed to be nerve-wracking supposed to be enjoyable and fun like whenever he taught it to me so it was like see him get a sense of calm about you and just go execute a pitch and it was what, what, what I was able to do and it was for me it was probably the greatest moment in my professional uh, career you know maybe hands down and one of the better moments in my entire life that's cool though that when you're feeling the pressure or the nerves that you still had the wherewithal to look for him to see your father and that settled you mm -hmm. um, what if he could have spoken to you in that moment while you were nervous or unsettled or just feeling the pressure what would your dad have said to you he would have put his hand on my on my side of my face tapped my face saying calm down calm down you're good you know do what you've always done 
don't think about these people around here. Do what you've always done. You know, he's, he's always been a positive person. He's always been a guy that made me work. Um, he's never, I've never taken the shortcut on anything. I never was able to. Um, I was never the biggest kid in school. I was never the smallest kid in school. I was always kind of middle of the pack. I was never the best player. I was never the, the worst player. So everything was kind of earned a little bit. I had to work for it. And, and my dad taught me that from the time I was three years old when I started playing. He started coaching me. And, um, you know, I can remember, you know, three or four different times of making errors in the field or not hustling. And we'd stay to the game. He'd let all the kids go and shake all the parents' hands and stuff. And then we'd be out there until for another two or three hours, kind of either hit me ground balls and make sure I don't make that mistake again or make me run the bases hard. That way I don't jog again. There's just little stuff like that that he instilled in me as a kid that was like, um, you know, you're never, you're never too big for the game. You're never too big for the opponent that you're facing. And that was... You know, I've always I've always felt that way, and, it, and he's always told me never to show emotion because, you know, it, just because you're doing good right now doesn't mean you'll be doing good next inning. You don't want to get too high on the high and too low on the lows, and um, you know, and, and that's just something that it's just a blue collar mentality, and I think that's why, you know, it's just one of those things that you you, you only hear people talking about, you know, earn, earning things or or people get stuff handed to them where you have the easy road or whatever the case may be but you know once you earn things and you don't get things things will come as easy as they do to some people then I feel like you have a greater appreciation sometimes for things like that. Would your dad get a kick out of the fact that you're driving a James Bond car right now? Oh my god he'd love it he'd love it he'd probably ask that a wheelchair accessible one so he could drive it. <laughs> you know what we would figure out a way to make it happen I don't know oh, you yeah. get an army of people you gotta bring them here and we would totally do it. <laughs> I um I felt like there was no way that we could be in this car without a little of this. Oh no, absolutely not. That's sick. Right? Yes. <laughs> I'll do this. I can even turn the volume up a little bit. I mean, That's where you turn the volume, it just sets huh? the mood, right? It does. It does. It makes you want to go through a chase scene. <laughs> it does. It makes you want to take this corner going 100 right now. Are you a um? You, you could try it. Not, not I don't know what would it. happen. <laughs> I don't really know what would happen either. Are I'm you, not James Bond, so I'm not going to drive it just as good as he is, I'm guessing. Are you a movie guy? Well, I did a James Bond. I called it Tomlin 007. <laughs> and I just grabbed music from James Bond movies. Um, That's awesome. This is from Live and Let Die, Paul McCartney. It's uh -huh. a classic. Yeah. Although I remember Guns N' Roses singing this song, too. Did yes. Guns N' Roses do this song? I, I think, think so. They did. I'm pretty sure it was. You know this one. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know I'm a bit older than you, but... How old are you? <laughs> Older. <laughs> no, I don't think that. Not that much older. Older. <laughs> now, see, that's a good one. That is a good one. One of my favorites, and I always liked Skyfall, is the Adele song. Yes. How do you feel about ballads? Like soft music. Like, I like it. Yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big country music fan. Um, I like a. I don't know if you've ever heard Uncle Lucius before. He's a, kind of a bluesy, jazzy, I guess, type country singer. He's from East Texas, or they play in East Texas quite a bit, but um, I like soft, mellow music. I enjoy that. I like dinner music and stuff like that. I know. I like it, too. I always thought this was a good one, this Skyfall with Adele, but yeah. this one is from The Spy Who Loved Me, and I feel like this is a song, at least the first part, we could dedicate it to you. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> it does. No one's quite as good as you and your team, as far as I'm concerned. Our team, no doubt about yep. it. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, also. Yep. Then it starts to get romantic, and it would be a song that your wife would be singing to you. Yes. <laughs> um, you okay, but you like country, so I put some country on here too. You're like this is old country. Oh, yeah. You like Dirk? Is that like, yeah, I like Dirk. This is old school now. I like actually saw Dirk uh, at the Old Palace in East Texas. I'm gonna take the block around one more time. Yeah. Do you mind? No, I think that's good. Let's do it. Um, it was at the Old Palace in Tyler, Texas. It was him, Miranda Lambert, and I can't remember who else it was. I love Miranda Lambert. Miranda Lambert's from Glendale, Texas. Is that close to you? Like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Have you ever met her? No, never met her. Oh, she's one of my favorites. Every yeah, song really she good. makes is great. It is. It really is. 
Okay, so you saw Dirks, Miranda, and I can't remember somebody who, else. There like was Jason somebody Dean else. or maybe? Uh, or? No, it was... I want to say... Um, it might have been like a Kelly Pickler or something like that. I think Doug Finley was the headline at the okay. time. But that was... That was... That was freaking... Might have been in high school. So, I mean, I, was, I don't know how long ago. That was at least 13 years ago. We had... Danny Salazar on Driving Cleveland, who of course, I mean, loves Latin music, but he yeah. said a lot of you guys have gotten him to like country music too. Mm -hmm. So I said, see, it's a very diverse um, clubhouse where you're open to all types of music. <laughs> I, I honestly I feel like what people should do is, is, is in this world right now that we live in is come spend time in our clubhouse and see the diverse people and walks of life that are in our clubhouse. And watch how we all interact with each other. It's amazing. There's no that. one or one right way of doing things. There's no, there's no segregation. There's no like judging or anything like that. It's just period. It's just everybody is, enjoys everybody, no matter color, race, wherever you're from, ethnicity, whatever, whatever the case may be. It's just like we're a team. This yeah. is what we're supposed to do. I love it's it. It's like it's so crazy, but we've talked about that several times. Like if you get, you get somebody to come to Cleveland to in our clubhouse to, enjoy, like, to, to watch how we interact I mean it could get ideas do, do some, I don't know I don't know how you do it but you talk about different walks of life and everybody getting along that's what you want in the world right oh, I think that's so beautiful that's the way it should be you're just it people is. right yeah, we're just, just people. people yeah people are people no matter what they look like or where they're from they're still people this episode is actually, we're a year old now. The show, series is a year old. So I was thinking, like, moving forward, we would ask um, the same questions of everyone. Because, you know, you talk about how everybody's different and there's a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we'll get all different answers. But I'm going to, you're going to be our guinea pig with this, all right? All right. Mm -hmm. So if you found out that your life was going to be made into a movie, what would you want your theme song to be? Theme song? Yeah. What would you put on the soundtrack? Probably Uncle Lucius, Keep the Wolves Away. Alright. If, if fear didn't exist, what is one thing you would do that you're afraid of? Oh... Probably um, base jump off the Grand Canyon. And have it recorded. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about that. So you can have proof you did it. Yeah. Uh, what brings you the most joy in life? My family. What is something that you strongly dislike? Something I strongly dishate. Evil. Mm -hmm. I really hate evil in this world. What's your favorite swear word? <laughs> Let me say it out loud. You can say it out loud. <laughs> you can believe it. Yep. <laughs> From, I don't know. Hell. Not hell. hell. I don't know. Like, damn. Damn it. Something it's like not that. even that yeah. bad. That's pretty evil. No. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't really mean to, but I swear it kind of often. So that's kind of a fault of mine that I'm trying to work on, especially with two kids that are they're like sponges. Oh my gosh, and then they repeat. As as, oh yeah, I'll, I'll walk out and stump my toe and be like, oh shit, and my daughter will go, oh shit, and I'll, god dang it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They say uh, people who swear are actually really honest people, though. I feel like I'm a pretty <laughs> honest person, yeah. Um, so the series is called Driving Cleveland. What is your favorite thing about Cleveland? People. This is this is like my hometown. It really is the the blue collar mentality, and I don't mean it in a negative way whatsoever. I feel like that's the the best way, the only way to be, is the hard working mentality that, that this town has had to go through over the years. And the same way my town was, and the same team, same way my town is still to this day. And I I feel like that the appreciation that these the people have around here. Um, for their sports, for their for the casino that we're driving by right now, for for everything around here is it's just it, it's it's enjoyable to watch. It's enjoyable to be a part of, and um, I think that's what's made my transition to Cleveland a hell of a lot easier is because the people have made it that way. And 
and um, it's been fun for me. It's, it's, so, it's like a, it's like a, um, a, it is my second home. Actually, it's probably my first home now, but, um, and they've done a great job of welcoming me in, and, and I love it here. So cool that you feel that way. Now, is this right that you met your wife through a taxidermy, sort of, indirectly? Her father, yeah, her father. Isn't that crazy? So <laughs> yeah. how did that happen, exactly? So one of her, well, her father, um, he's a, he, he's a taxidermist uh, first, but the, he guides all over the, all over the United States for uh, different companies uh, to kill deer, to, to have people come out there to kill deer, or go to these places. And so he'll, he'll guide and show people where there are and stuff like that. And, um, so I got to talking to um, a good friend of mine, Blake Powell, about um, getting deer mounted. And as soon as he, he was telling me about this tax service, and he, so he called him one day, we were talking to him, and um, my wife actually um, tweeted at me, and it's like, hey, nice bucks, all the buck you killed. And <laughs> so we just got to talking that way, and then I asked Blake for a number, and we, I finally got her number. And, um, so we just started texting back and forth, and I was duck hunting with Cody Allen up in um, Arkansas, Stuttgart, Arkansas. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to see this girl. So I flew from Arkansas to, to Georgia, um, Athens, Georgia. She was at the University of Georgia at the time. Got to talking. Um, got to hit it off. Went to went to uh, dinner and had lunch the next day. Spent a few days with her. And it just kind of all and it went seamlessly. So it was like, it ended up being perfect. And a couple months later, we ended up... Um, Tried getting married before actually about four months later getting married before I came out of spring training and then, stop it so you date so basically you you meet her through your now father-in-law yeah. who's like you'd be a great match yeah she sends you a text message that says nice buck that's oh, yeah. what like she gave you the pickup line oh yeah yes yeah <laughs> you said I'm going to see this girl and four months later yeah four months later that was it it was all over as soon as you met her you just knew that's right okay so people say this josh tommy people say like when you know you just know and when you would hear people say that before you met your wife did you think come on is yeah. it really that do you really just know no <laughs> and then it happened is, so would you say that's the truth like when I, you know I you would. just know i would it, it, you just have this to me it's about comfort and uh Whenever I'm talking to her, whenever I'm, you know, looking at her, wherever I'm holding her hand or, or or hugging her, everything just feels right. Then there's feel like there's nothing, there's no work to do that. It was yeah. not like oh I gotta I gotta hold her hand in front of these people or you know I gotta give her a kiss by in front of these people. There's nothing like that. It was like I want to do these things. I'm I'm happy to do these things. And it was like just being comfortable. But it was, it was like it's like going up to you and giving your best friend, you know, like giving him a handshake that's, that's what it was like for me it was just like that I feel, like I feel like I've been with this girl my entire life I don't know life without her so it was it was it was really seamless of, of I guess to to meeting her and then dating her and marrying her everything just kind of flowed right together and ended up being perfect <laughs> it wasn't like you came from a super rich family or a famous family you work hard to get to where you are then suddenly you have access to a lot of things that you couldn't have imagined having access to before. Was that a little crazy to you at first? I didn't understand it. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with it. Um, you know, especially after last year, the, the notoriety you get from playing in these national televised games is, it's unreal. It's, and I don't know how to handle that kind of stuff. I've never even been in front of a video camera, much less a real camera, you know, in my life. So. It wasn't like I was. I came from a, a town that where everybody wanted to be in, so you're you're constantly like, you know, around superstars and stuff like that. So I didn't know really how to act. So <laughs> he's like, what? Yeah, kids like what the hell? Even uh, <laughs> Rolls Royce. <laughs> but it was one of those things where like you just kind of you take it for what it's worth. Of okay, you're getting these cool opportunities to do these things and or to have a platform or to, to go to go talk to these kids or to speak about AVN the stuff that my dad had um, take advantage of it and, and it was 
something that I didn't really know how to handle or how to do or, or what really to do with that kind of notoriety or, or, or I guess being recognized that, that much. I didn't really know how to handle it. So it was kind of cool to, to experience that part in your life, but also like, you know, take a step back and realize that they're still, they're still the same person. They're still, you know, still got the same goals in mind and they're still, um, you know, doing one thing and that's trying to win the World Series and that's what you got to focus on during all that time. Well, I believe you're going to do it. I feel like the energy is just there. You you talked about how great the team is and I'll tell you what, you are one cool person. <laughs> I, I really that. love your attitude on life and Thank your you. respect for people and um, all that you talked about with the diversity in the clubhouse and um, your love for your family. I'm really glad I got to meet you. You are one cool, awesome person. Really thank you and I wish me. you continued success. I know it will you happen well. for you. I know it will happen for you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you for letting me drive this car. I think it's unreal. It's cool, right? Oh, heck yeah. oh my gosh. I got Kidness's attention. He's probably going to want to buy this thing now. <laughs>